Hi guys, welcome to another trick. This one's called Scribbler. And the trick involves a regular deck of cards, 52 pieces of card, and you can show the spectators these quite freely. Now I am a bit of a scribbler, I have to admit. That means that whenever I'm on the phone to people, I tend to have a pen and scribble little notes down. And being a magician, I tend to carry cards with me all the time rather than a notepad so I tend to deface my cards and tend to scribble on these. Now I did scribble on one of these earlier on and uh, if we just go through these we can see uh, where, oh no it's not that one but give you an idea there's an example I tend to scribble all over my playing cards and oh and I've even put my shopping list on the back getting some sugar, milk and coffee. But that's not the one. You see, I want to show you a trick today that is going to be an absolute miracle. It really is. You see, I want you to pick a card randomly. And if it's a true miracle, you will pick the card that I scribbled on earlier. Only one card has been scribbled on. I won't tell you what it is just yet. What I'd like you to do is take in a couple of these. If you can write down randomly two single digit numbers that I couldn't possibly have known. Now this is an absolute free choice. There's no magician's force here. They're random numbers and they hold on to those tightly. You say we come back to those. Now the chances of us finding the card that I scribbled on is 1 in 52. We know that one of these cards has my scribble on it. What are the two numbers that you wrote down? Just lay them down there. A 3 and a 5. I'd like you to add up those 8. So the number you've arrived at is 8. Remember you could have had any two digit numbers. We're going to deal down to the 8th card. You'll notice I haven't shuffled the card since you've revealed your number in case you think I'm putting the card in a particular place. But here is that miracle. Stand by for something that's going to blow you away. We'll take the cards. 1, 2, in fact, we'll turn them face up so you can see them. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Eight. Ah. Sadly, a miracle hasn't happened. This is not the card that I scribbled on earlier on. This is your card, the Three of Diamonds. Okay. Uh, it wasn't that one either, or that one, or that one. You see, the card I scribbled on was the Ace of Clubs. So, what I do is, if I have a look for the Ace of Clubs, just to prove that I did scribble something on the back. Um, Yep, there it is there, the Ace of Clubs. What did I scribble on the back? And that may not be a miracle, but it is an impossibility. The Three of Diamonds is what I scribbled. And it just so happens, out of the random numbers that you chose, we arrived at the Three of Diamonds, the exact card. But remember, you did scribble two random numbers. They could have been a 1 and a 2, a, a, a 5 and a 7, a 9 and an 8. But you scribbled these two numbers, which came to 8. You see, as well as scribbling on the back of the card, I scribbled a number on the front. The number 8. And it is the only number on there. really is. And that is an impossible card trick. So here's the secret to that particular trick. Now I called the trick Scribbler. It just seemed appropriate. And you're presenting it as a kind of miracle is going to happen. You've scribbled on a card, they're going to choose a card and it happens to be the one that you scribbled on. But it turns out that it's not. So you then show them the card that you scribbled on and it happens to have their freely chosen card scribbled on the back. That was the premise of the trick. Hope you got that. 
But here is the secret to the trick. Now it does require uh, uh, two stacks, and I know a lot of magicians out there say, well I don't like card stacks. Hopefully you're kind of overlooked this just because it's such a great crowd pleaser, this one. Works really well. Now, what I've got, it takes a bit of preparation. Hopefully I explain it clearly enough. If not, rewind the video and watch it a couple of times. It may seem a bit daunting on the first revelation, but once you've set it up, it just drops into place. Let me show you what it requires. It does require a stack of cards. There's 15 cards here. Now, if I spread these, I know it's difficult for the camera to pick up the cards, so I will put the cards here in the description below this video to make it easy. So you can try pausing this video here and seeing what the stack is. But you need those 15 cards in that order for how I presented it. Okay, I'll show you an alternative way of presenting this trick where you don't need to worry about the order. But you do need those cards. Once you've got that stack in that order, they're eventually going to go on top of the pack because you're going to force one of those cards. It is a card force. So because they're going to go on the top of the deck and you're going to force one of those by using two random single digits. And the way this works, if you get somebody to write down two single digits, the lowest number they can come up with is three. Because if they put a 1 and a 2 down, then that comes to 3. They can't get below that, so 3. The highest value they can get is 17, which would be if they wrote an 8 and a 9. If you add those together, it would bring up 17. So the range you've got is 3 to 17. So that tells us we need to pad this out with a couple of random cards on top of the pack. Okay? So there's your stack, and that will go on top of the cards in the deck, like that. Now we're forcing those cards. Now those 15 cards have been written on the backs of 15 other cards from the pack. So all of these cards, the four of hearts, the three of spades, the six of spades, all of those appear in our stack. Now you're probably saying, do you write these on any cards? You don't. What you do, you need to know which one has the correct card on the back just by the face. And the way that I do this, you might choose a different way, but I use the chased order, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, and I also do less two. What I mean by that, what if we force the card, the three of hearts? Now I know that the next suit would be spades, okay, clubs, hearts, spades, and if I deduct two from that, that will give me the ace of spades. So when I say at the end, no, the card that I scribbled on was the ace of spades, if we have a look here, there it is there, the ace of spades, and on the back is the three of hearts. That's how the trick works. So I always know, as soon as their card is turned over, in my head, I follow the next suit in the chase order, and I deduct two from the value. And that will tell me which card is the card that's got their card on the back. Are you following this? <laughs> I'm lost, but hopefully you'll get it. So that's the stack there. By the way, this number here, because I know that the Three of Hearts is in a particular order, um, it's the fifth card in the stack. When you stack these, they're all in a certain order. Three, four, five, six, seven. Because I know that, I also write the number in the top corner here. Okay. Now, I'll be honest. I never used to do this. You can do away with this because I think just by you turning over a card and saying here's my scribble on there matches their chosen card. I think that works 
on its own. You don't need to go any further. But if you want to do what I did and say, not only did I scribble that, but when I turn it over, I also picked your number. So you've got a double premonition prediction type ending. But you don't have to do this. Watch the performance and decide whether or not when you reveal the card, you leave it at that and that's the end of it. But I do put them in the corner. Now make sure you put them in the corner, in one corner, because when you spread the cards, you don't want that number to be revealed. Okay, That's why I've done them there. Also, on the back, you'll notice that I've scribbled the name of the card kind of to one side. You'll see there's a big area blank here. The name of the card is put up here. In fact, I probably could have done this better on one line uh, by just drawing a symbol of the diamond, say 10 of diamonds. That way, I could, when I spread these, actually spread up to halfway without revealing these. Now, these don't need to be in any order. Okay, so we can shuffle these as much as we like. Yeah, they don't need to be in any order. Now, these will go at the bottom of the pack. Okay, so these will go at the bottom of the pack, like that. Okay. Now, to hide these, here they are. To hide these, I just put a couple of cards on top. Now, what I do, because I've got a bad memory, You'll notice I've got a 5 here, and I picked a 5, or you can have a 3, is because you see that middle pip, the way it's facing. When it's the correct way up, for me, I know that I can spread the cards and not reveal that number in the corner that I drew, because it's down the bottom end. Okay, So I always know that's how it works. If I flip the pack over end for end and spread, I'm not going to reveal the writing on the back, which is down here, because I know that I've got a bit of breathing space before any text is revealed. So I know which way. And then I flip that end for end and I can do that. So I'm sure you'll figure it out. If you flip it end for end, you can show the cards. That's the setup. Let me go walk you through it. The Joker, by the way, is just a filler. You don't need to put that in. Um, so what I do is just at the back, I just pop that in so that when I introduce the trick and say, look, here's the cards, I can spread the cards, talk about scribbles, flip it end for end, spread them to show them and say that I tend to scribble on a card and I did scribble on a card and what I do is I, I go through not revealing these numbers go through and say look I scribbled on one of the oh no not this one this is a joker but there's one and I kind of make a bit of a joke about there's my scribbles my doodles uh, with my shopping list on the back and you get rid of that that gives them an idea about what you're talking about scribbling on the cards but you say there is one card that has been scribbled upon. They give you two numbers. Let me just make up a, a different number to what we've used. Um, let's choose these two numbers. So people write those down, the two and the three. What I will then do is turn the pack end for end, drop it down, add those together. That's five. You can do all these face up. There's nothing to hide here. That's just your stack of the 15 cards you're going to force. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. And there's five. Okay. So there we can see the fifth card is, happens to be the three of hearts. Now as soon as I turn it over and say, oh, actually it wasn't this one. What I'm doing in my head is I'm looking at the next suit in my head, clubs, hearts, spades. So I know that the spade, I deduct two from that, which would be the ace. So we put that to one side. I take a few more cards off to say you could have had any of these, but none of these were the card that I scribbled on. 
and I scoop these up and put them to the bottom flip the pack over again end for end I'm always turning these over end for end so I turn them over and I say actually it was the ace of spades I scribbled on and as I go through to find that you'll notice I'm not pushing the cards too far across there's the ace of spades what I do is I put that up like that I'm hiding that corner I then pull the card out, put my hand over and turn it over to say, there is the scribble, can you see that? Although you didn't pick the right card, the ace of spades, you did by somehow manage to pick a card that I did right on there, the three of hearts. Now you could end it there, or you can then reveal that you knew that they would think of number five. I mean, the logic behind that is ridiculous, really. Of course, the card and the number will match. So this, I don't always include that. So don't write that on there if you don't want to. Let me just show you another card. Say if the card Dad picked was the Ten of Clubs. Remember, that's one of my stack cards. If they had chosen the Ten of Clubs, then, of course... The ten of clubs, if we uh, deduct two from that, that's eight, and I know it's going to be a heart. The eight of hearts in here, if I go through, look for the eight of hearts, there it is, the eight of hearts. When I turn that over, you can see it's got the ten of clubs written on there. Have a play around with it. I think it's a great little trick. It, it's harder to explain than it is to perform, trust me. Watch the video a couple of times, Follow through with the instructions, make it up, have a little practice, and I think you'll find it's a great little uh, ending to uh, an evening's performance or a good opener in there. Because, of course, you do have half the cards that haven't been marked at all, so you can just remove those, get rid of these cards, perform a little packet effect with those cards, and do a packet switch to carry on the rest of the evening's performance. Till next time, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Also the little bell, because every time you upload, you get a notification on your phone, your tablet, or your computer to say a new video has arrived. We do try and upload at least one or two videos every single week. If you've got any ideas for tricks you would like to share with us, or you want me to reveal, then or have a go at revealing, then let me know in the comments below. Till next time, practice and enjoy.